we have been in um, Isaiah, but what we did was we read a statement out of Isaiah. Uh, it, it's um, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse uh, 15 through 17. And this is, um, verse 15 says, And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. And this is, <clears throat> this is those who we discussed um, the testimony, the testimony of Christ. And that that's not our little how we got saved or the most recent testimony of what he's done in our life. That is... And we, we just went through a whole bunch of scriptures using the word testimony and showing that they they just speak of, of being with him in death or in sufferings. And, um, <clears throat> and that, that's important to him. See, there I go again. But that's important to him. See, and we, you know, many would go, well, I'm going through sufferings and stuff and I need you to, to pray. Well, I pray. I do. I pray over all these things. But my mind doesn't go there first and, you know, call it a lack or whatever. But my mind goes to we should be with him where he is at, not always getting him with us where we're at. And uh, and that can come across as condemnation. And it's not I never mean for condemnation. I mean so that we can know him. And the whole purpose of this, this sharing that we've been in is that the Lord swooped in by His Spirit, and He began to show us Adonai and the and that relationship of that person, whichever of the Trinity functions as that at the time. How it is important to know Him in that way, so that we can relate to. There we go again. Relate to Him the way that he is in his eternal nature instead of in his temporal abilities to touch our lives. and But he did that. I didn't, I, I was blindsided with it too. But he swooped in and he showed us that. And he didn't show it for me and he didn't show it for me to teach it to you. But he showed it for us. He showed it that we might see it and know him and and know how to flow with him and relate with him in these things. And um, <clears throat> so anyway, we went through these scriptures on the testimony, and we found that they were relating to those who would be with him in his sufferings. And um, <clears throat> we, um, so we, we actually, the diving board from which we jumped off on that was Isaiah uh, 8, 15 through 17, which I just read that first portion um, and um, to um, to see that to see it so so he talks about those that stumble and fall and we saw that in first Peter and then verse 16 Isaiah uh, chapter 8 bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples and I will wait upon the Lord and so he's he's this is this is um, uh, Isaiah and he's saying look you know, you're going to stumble and fall. You're going to be broken. You're going to be snared. You're going to be taken by this uh, Assyria coming down and you, this storm, this um, attack, this <clears throat> thing. And instead of instead of uh, being deceived as to what this is really about, this is meant for you to be with me, saith the Lord, in these things. But you are you are stumbling at that great stumbling block, which is Christ crucified, and we we always thought those scriptures related to people who didn't believe in Jesus. But the 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 true explanation of that in the New Testament and uh, throughout the prophets is um, that he's speaking to us. Um, that we would, who those of us who know him, that we would be with him in his sufferings, that we would fellowship in his sufferings for his sake, for his glory, for the Father's glory. And another thing that I, I, I do is, <clears throat> it may seem tedious at times that I, I give you so much scripture, 
but I do that with purpose. I'm not trying to bore you or, or, or make you go, oh, there's so much, there's so much here. <clears throat> For the most part, the scriptures that I give are usually all talking about the same thing so that we can see it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And, um, and for those who really, really had the time and want to dig into it, then there's the, there's the Word of God where you can start looking at it for yourself and seeing that. And just to I do that so that, you know, if somebody says, well, you know, that's not true, you say, okay, well, what about all this? I mean, the Word of God declares these things. It's not just some man making it up. <clears throat> um and also, thank you, Mallory, for your encouragement. Um, um, and then, then verse 17, and I will wait. So, so you have these that are stumbling and bumbling and, you know, being snared and broken and everything because they, they're stumbling at that great stumbling block, which is Christ crucified. Uh, but then you have the, his encouragement. Isaiah, Isaiah is talking and saying, don't stumble, don't fall, don't be broken, don't be taken, uh, bind up the testimony upon the Lord uh, 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 and seal the law among his disciples. Get this down inside of you. Be, you know, if we have to search the scriptures and see it there, do it until we don't have to see it there anymore, that the Spirit has written that on the fleshly tables of our heart. And that's the that's the victory, not Bible school class or church or Randy's teaching or any of that stuff that is basically worthless, but to seek out the Lord and to be drawn drawing his heart toward us as we as we say i'm drawn toward you <clears throat> and so uh so he speaks of them stumbling then he then he gives encouragement and says bind up that testimony uh, within you about the sufferings of christ and then he says he he refers to himself and he says and i will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face. Remember um, uh, that when you're in that corridor, when you're in that the sufferings of Christ, it feels like God is not there. And the purpose of that is so that you will know him not based on him intervening, but you will know him by the nature that is within you to be in that situation in his spirit. So he says, I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. So he's he's saying he's not even saying, well, I got it, and I know this, and you don't. He's saying, you know what? I'm doing the same thing you are. I am I am waiting on the Lord. I am looking for the Lord, uh, <clears throat> and I am with him in the process. So. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to have to jump down here then. Um, so one of the verses we went to was the first couple of verses there in uh, the book of Revelation where John, who was on Patmos, was there for the testimony, for the testimony of Jesus. And that's what this is referring to, the sufferings of Christ, to show forth those. <clears throat> this was the latter part of his life and to show forth the fact that he is one with Jesus in his desire to glorify the Father through the Son in that spirit of self-giving that doesn't need to justify, doesn't need to attack others, doesn't find it necessary to right every wrong that's going on, but wants only to, to bear that by Christ to the glory of Christ that you're doing it and Christ doing it in you to the glory of the Father. <clears throat> so, um, so he says um, uh, that, that testimony, that testimony. Um, and then I wrote down here, <clears throat> uh, that spirit of not loving your lives unto the death is, 
is the spirit that the prophets all wrote about. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Uh, you know, the ones we've been studying, such as Jeremiah and Isaiah, that testimony testifies of Jesus. It testifies of the Lamb. It testifies of Christ crucified. But it testifies of him in us, uh, the, the, the brethren that have this testimony of Jesus, it says in the book of Revelation. Um, so that testimony testifies of Jesus, his method of power, meaning, well, it's probably written here, through weakness and death, his method of power through weakness and death, the brethren have that working in them. So... Uh, I said, let's consider that testimony. So here we go. And we're going to try to finish out. There's still scriptures that we're hitting here, but we, Lord willing, we can go through some of these and see that. Of course, 1 Peter 1. So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. And remember, the emphasis is the testimony and the fact that this corridor, this uh, entrance into this is God trying to get his son formed in us in a certain way. Not just as a Christian, not just a, a learning certain ministries or learning how to pray for the sick or any of that stuff, but to get his son in us in a certain way, as it were, in a certain place where when we go in there and we enter that, we enter that with the cross being the focal point or the lamb being in us so that everything that he's talking about, Isaiah in this eighth chapter, don't assemble yourself. Don't go looking for help. Don't justify yourself. Don't use your mouth to, to be an evildoer back to them. And see, there it is. So I can say something like that and then someone can go, you know, this is discouraging. You know, everything you share is just discouraging. I can't, I can't live up to that. I'm, you know, I'm just condemned when you preach. It's not meant to condemn. It's not. It's not. It's meant for us to, to see our lack and to say, Lord, I want your life and your nature and your spirit to overshadow me and come forth in a, in a, in a manifestation and a testimony of your son, Father, so that, so that the oneness that you prayed, Jesus, in John 17, can be manifest in my mortal flesh. And that was a prayer that, you know, Paul prayed in, in Philippians and, you know, that, that he would be manifest in mortal flesh. And again, that's not the manifestation of Jesus in us, running around laying hands on the sick and everybody getting healed. It's not the one he refers to there. It is the Spirit. And, you know, the bad thing is, because this is what I'm called to, this is what I'm called to preach, I will always do this. This is, this is it. So I, I understand if people, you know, don't understand or they get condemned. I, you know, I would say... If all you get from my sharing is condemnation, then please don't listen to it. Because that, that's not my purpose, and nor is it my desire. It is to glorify the Lord, and if I'm doing the exact opposite of that, then don't be in, in condemnation about not listening anymore. Just don't do it. Be free. Be free. Be free. And seek the Lord as the Spirit wants to move on you. And I don't have the last word or the, you know, of everything. I just know that in my heart, I love the Lord in this way. And I want with all my heart 
that the Spirit who gave it can also give it to you um, because I know that's his heart. That the, that the true focal point isn't the Spirit giving it to me, but the true focal point is you. I believe that. I do. Okay, so... Um, Um, 1 Peter 1, 9 through 12, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. So this is the prophets and their relationship to the sufferings of Christ, not to their, their relationship to condemning or, 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 you know, being the bad guys in the ministry, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but, uh, and the glory that should follow, see, the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow. And there is a glory that follows when you've gone through that corridor and you get down to this end here. That is what Peter called joy unspeakable and full of glory. Um, verse 12, Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven which things the angels did desire to look into. All right, so that said, so showing the relationship of this message with, this is a New Testament scripture, seeing the connection of what he's saying with the prophets and that's what we've been dealing with that very thing with jeremiah and isaiah and shortly we'll go into ezekiel and we won't spend as much time with ezekiel because once once the basic premise of ezekiel is stated there's no need to to keep going but he has a basic premise and it's not jeremiah's and it's not Isaiah's, but it is all in relationship to the sufferings of Christ. Um, so Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 25 and 26. And so this is a New Testament scripture. The spirit, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And the spirit of prophecy, not the prophecy that these guys were prophesying, because it, it was literal, but the spirit of it was testifying of Jesus and and of him in this spirit and in him in this way and in him wanting us to be with him with him in fellowship with him in this spirit and in this way so Luke 24 verse 25 and 26 then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe I see I've never said that to you <laughs> O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets what? Jesus? What do you remember? He's talking to the guys on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> you know, it's like all that the prophets, you know, well, there's more to the Old Testament than the prophets. There's the, there's the good stuff, the, the Psalms. Well, the, the Psalms he refers to are also along this line. Um, all that the prophets have spoken Ought not Christ, this, this is what he's saying, this is what the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That's it. He just confirmed that what Jeremiah was, the spirit of what he was saying, not that there, again, there was a literal situation going on with Babylon in the case, in the case of Jeremiah. And, and Nebuchadnezzar was coming down with his hordes. And, and, you know, it was a... But within that was the spirit of prophecy, which represented the testimony of Jesus, which was them to be with him in a certain spirit through this unfair, unjust, 
not right situation and just to be with him in a certain spirit that didn't require speaking or acting or doing anything except for having that spirit manifest. So now let's go to Acts 14, <clears throat> verse 1 through 4. Acts 14, 1 through 4. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But, okay, so I shared this on Sunday morning, but anytime you're going to have the sweet savor of Christ, you're going to have the foul stench of the enemy. You... We all wanted, you know, it'd be like if we were with Jesus and then he died and then rose from the dead, we would all want it to just to be this crystal clear, fresh new morning with dew on the ground and the, the sun being just a certain way and it just be so heavenly and everything. Well, Pontius or, or uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Pharisees um, said, to the guards, uh, go spread the rumor that his disciples came and da 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 da. So, so while the believers were trying to tell people that Jesus is alive, he's alive. They're saying he's dead, and and his disciples are lying, and they stole his body to make it look this way. It's always this mix. You're trying to foul up the, the sweet savor of Christ. <clears throat> so you, that's what you have here. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made, read this, made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Made their minds evil affected against. That sounds like an evildoer. Evil against the brethren. That's, that's their ministry. That's their ministry. <clears throat> Verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony. Okay, so let's think about the word testimony. Okay, so here you have, you have the brethren there, you have Paul in them, and they're ministering the word. And, and uh, I mean, the Spirit of God is confirming and moving. And, and uh, all, you know, there's a great um, multitude, a great multitude of the Jews and also Greeks that are believing. And you're going, praise God. Who would have thought Iconium would have gotten this? Iconium of all the places. This is incredible. But then you got uh, unbelieving Jews, and they're going, let's see, let's stir up the Gentiles. Let's see if we can stir them up and make their minds. Let's work on their minds, not their spirit. Let's work on their minds and see if we can get them evil affected uh, against the brethren. Um, so here comes the testimony. Long time, therefore. Therefore is tying it back to minds evil affected against long time therefore abode they do you see what that's saying you, you've got you've got this mess going on and all this evil affecting going on and instead of them going let's just get out of here this is just too much let's go where everything is peaceful and wonderful instead they're going you know let's just stay here and just bear all this let's let's bear all this attack let's bear the testimony of jesus here in the midst of iconium write that down scribe <laughs> you know we're gonna do it made their minds evil affected against the brethren long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave which gave there's it's not just giving the testimony of the truth they're giving testimony of the lord <laughs> by by staying in that not resisting it but just bearing that 
unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Okay, so the one is the testimony and the other one is and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. <clears throat> so I wrote, they're staying in the place where people were against them to make them suffer. People were against them to make them suffer. Um, and that's the testimony of the sufferings of Christ and his grace that is to follow. They believed that to bear this testimony would have a grace that would follow. <clears throat> All right. I'm really trying to get through these scriptures. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 3. <clears throat> And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. You see that? This is, this is not just what he's preaching. He's He's not just preaching Christ and him crucified. He's, he's got the testimony of God, which is Christ and him crucified. And because that's his testimony, he was with them, not in strength, not in power, not in glory, not in greatness, but to be a testimony of the life uh, or of the self-giving nature of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We've only got a few more scriptures here. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. <clears throat> and, let's see. We don't have a class tonight, do we, after me? Okay, so I don't have to rush too much. We did go long on some of the announcements and stuff. 2 Corinthians 1, 7 through 12. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings of Christ. See, our hope is steadfast. Uh, our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings of Christ, so shall ye be also of the consolation. So there is this understanding with this, this first generation. This, this is the way they understood living for Jesus. Um, uh, and and he's and what what that is is there's going to be sufferings. There's going to be foul stenches mixed in with the beautiful fragrance of of Mary of Bethany. There's going to be uh, people stirring and evil affect evil affecting minds of people that you're trying to bring into the beauty of Christ. But you know realizing. These are the sufferings of Christ, and I will bear them in a right spirit, not that they're persecuting me for standing up for Christ, but that I am not going to fight back, blame them, point everything out that's wrong with them, uh, make them look bad so that, you know, we, you know, because because we're the good people here and they're the bad ones. No, once you start doing that, you're an evildoer just like they are. We've been through this. <laughs> um, so that, um, uh, so that he's saying those sufferings, so that there will be a glory or a consolation, a comfort that comes after it. That's this third place when you get here. This is the initial, initial one. And then this is the main one with the fire. Uh, and then this last one over here on the chart is, is when the glory that First Peter talks about over and over and over, that it shows up at the end of that. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, uh, partakers of the sufferings of Christ, so shall you be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. What? Paul, don't tell us about your troubles. Tell us about your miracles. Don't tell us about 
You know, tell us about the good thing. Tell us about the happy times. No, he's telling them about their experience going through this because they all believed that part of being a Christian was bearing the sufferings of Christ in a certain spirit to glorify God. And that would be the greater testimony of the Lord than anything you preached. Whether they saw it immediately or even some of them didn't get it. There is a power released in weakness or in suffering or in death when done by the Spirit of the Lamb. And that's just a fact. So that's why he goes immediately to his stuff. He's not, he's not going, well, you think you got trouble? Well, we got trouble. We really went through it. No, he's not doing that. See, we do that. <laughs> Somebody tells us what they're going through, you know. And, um, you know, well, I had to really bear this big heavy burden, this big cross. Well, I got a splinter once from the cross, you know. <laughs> That's, that's not what they're doing. Okay. I would not have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But, uh, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Why did he use the word but there? Why didn't he say, and we had the sentence of death? This is the cross. This is the sufferings of Christ. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. If we're not in that spirit of, of uh, the, that death, that sentence of death that, uh, that happens in here, that sentence of suffering or that sentence of death, that Christ in you will go through and then there's not going to be a resurrection. But he says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. In other words, we're going to, we're going to keep our hands off of it and our mouth shut and our, our minds that are evil affected. We're going to stop listening to that. And we're going to not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us also, uh, us from so great a death, and death will deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Do you see that? See, the deliverance is not that he gets you out of it. The deliverance is that he raises you from that death because you entered into it by the Spirit of Christ within you. Okay, so verse 11, ye also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in this world and, and uh, more abundantly to you word. All right. So uh, I think I'm going to just go, go down to the last one here. That uh, 2 Timothy 1.8. <clears throat> While you're turning there, I'm going to take a little, a little sip. Second Timothy. One eight. Be not, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. Don't be ashamed that Jesus was crucified and he never justified himself. So everybody believed that, well, you know, if he's not going to speak up, then he's probably guilty. He probably doesn't have any answers. Don't be ashamed of him. This, this death was a glorious death. Don't be ashamed of him. It was beautiful to the Father. There's no, beautif there's no beauty that you should desire him, but then he goes into the be beauty that God desires. In, in Isaiah 52, same prophet 
uh, be not ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, the guy that's sitting in prison, as if, you know, well, if you were really of God, you wouldn't be in prison, or you'd like, or we heard the story that Peter, the gates flew open in the, you know, or whatever, and, or, you know, all of the things that we think, and yet, he's, he's not, he chose not to just go through a, a trial. He chose to be in this corridor of sufferings, this, this, this place of the sufferings of Christ in that same spirit. And he says, I'm doing this in the same spirit of the one that you're ashamed of that was, you know, looked so bad on the cross. I'm doing it. I'm doing the same thing. So don't be ashamed of it. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, not according to the power of God. Like, oh, I, you know, I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. Or Satan, get out of here. All that kind of stuff. But the power of God that doesn't feel like it has to call 10,000 angels or doesn't feel like it has to, you know, uh, um, speak up and prove that he's innocent and that these all are lies at his, at his uh, 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 accusations when he was on trial, um, but could say, you know, when Pilate said, you know, don't you know that I have power to let you go or to not? And he said, you have no power at all except it be given of God. And Jesus is using his power by not speaking. It, it's not, it, there's not magic in not speaking. It's talking about not justifying, not cursing the, the cursors, not uh, attacking those who have attacked you, not from showing people up for what they are, uh, even even if they deserve it, but bearing that in a certain spirit, that's the, that's the testimony of our Lord. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord that we're all trying to live in accordance with that. And But instead of, of being ashamed of, of him or me in these situations, why don't you be a partaker of this also in this spirit? Why don't you be that? Why don't you enter into that with us? This is what we do. This is this is the nature we've been given. This is the God that is on the throne. Uh, this slaughtered lamb. This is him. It's him. Amen. You know, I'm really sad that I talk, have to talk so fast sometimes, but it's like there's always so much <laughs> of him. There's always so much. And, um, and it's also exciting. It's exciting. I get excited. I'm very thankful to be able to share with you tonight. I'm very blessed for those of you who are here tonight. And I pray that the Lord, totally apart from anything I said here, would have the freedom to move in you and speak whatever's on his heart. He can say things totally opposite of what I'm saying or different that we may know him, that we may love him, and that our knowing him only means that we love him more because we know him. Father, you are so incredible and what you have brought forth of your son, your son, who's a, the express image of what you're like, in your 
spirit being of that same that is all of one. Thank you. Thank you for the hope that you've set before us. And Father, let us not be anxious, but let us run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, trusting, trusting that he that hath begun a good work in us, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you. God bless you guys. See you next time.